Moving on into the World Cup and knowing you will lead your country, it's something that I couldn't even dream, honestly, a few years ago. The prospect now of that first quarter-final against Wales. Sergio Parise is rather inconsolable out there. Italy have played in all of the uh, previous World Cups uh, from 1987 up until last World Cup. We've never been qualified for the, for the second round. A bruising defeat for Italy and their captain Sergio Parise. We know we, there's no beating around the bush. We're in a tough group um, with France and New Zealand and even Uruguay and Namibia, no pushovers. Um, so we've got to be at our best every week. And um, I think that's something that's uh, really excited the group. And um, I know we're onto something good. So yeah, I do feel that, that it's a different environment and, and one that, yeah, it's, it's really good to be a part of. Your draw sometimes influences things like, you know, you look at the draw for this World Cup, you know, you're going to, if you go on on um, seedings, you know you're, you're going to have the top four teams in the world on one side of the draw at the quarterfinal time. We're working super hard, and hopefully, we can change this uh, this thing about our, our history in the World Cups. The squad has changed a lot since uh, since 2019, but we've got a really exciting young team at the moment. This is my first World Cup. And this is my first World Cup. Il mio primo mondiale. And I've been to zero World Cups. And this is going to be my second World Cup. <laughs> it's funny that I'm one of the older guys and probably one of the more experienced. Um, but you know, really special to be a part of this young, exciting group and I think we're onto something pretty special um, and I'm just glad I can be a small part of it. I can't be a mum to these boys. <laughs> six foot four, six foot five, 111 kgs. Varney's obviously scrum off and young on the bed. Me on this bed, because I'm a good bloke, giving Tommy the double for the whole thing. Why, why is that? Older. No, because I have respect, because he's older and he's got more caps than me. First week of preparation and it's been it's been great, tough of course, especially for, for the physical part of it, but we we are excited to keep on going and we look forward to, to the World Cup. Ah. Oh. Yeah, Settimana di preparazione con la squadra per me, uh, ritorno di infortunio, dunque adesso un po' un lavoro per ritrovare il mio livello fisico e anche uh, ritrovare un po' di sensazione sul campo e spero che nei prossimi giorni uh, posso essere un, ancora un po' più con la squadra sul campo. This is my um, sixth World Cup. Uh, I went to two as a player. We won the first one in 1987. Um, I think the preparation is a lot different in the fact that uh, you know we we get together and we're together for a fair period of time. Um, back in those days, you uh, you know you didn't have a lot of the preparation that you do do now. But it, it's that's a difference. You know then it was amateur, now it's professional. What are we trying to get out of this uh, next uh, few days for me up there? Is uh, I want to see. From a staff perspective, you know, I want to just uh, to take a bit of notice of players, um, leadership, um, how they're getting on with one another, players that are just, you know, their general um, involvement, uh, particularly players that are sort of in the 24 to 33 group, because they're going to be the most important guys as we move on. Yeah, look, it's. It doesn't matter whether they're new or they're old, it's the same way. I mean, you've just got to be careful with new players that you don't um, gloss over things. And then it's about also then making sure that they are um, integrated into things and they feel part of a group and, you know, they have a, have a belonging to the team. So it's, um, you know, you can build it from that.
It's my first time in the Italy squad. I'm originally from England, but my dad is Nigerian-Italian, so that's where the heritage comes from for all those asking. For what we've done today, we had a morning gym session where we did upper body, so you have your key lift, which would be like a bench press or like dumbbells, and then you'll have more explosive work, so like med ball throws to sort of replicate the movements that you'll make in a rugby session, and then more focused lifts, so like some shoulder work, and then any sort of individual core training you want to do and that kind of thing. You've got a sweat on, especially in this 30 degree weather, but that's the kind of, this has been a hard day, so that's the kind of stuff you do in a hard day, and then it varies between the level of intensity you're going for on that kind of day. Getting hot, man. Way too hot for me. Coming from New Zealand, coming from one degrees to 35 degrees. <laughs> there's literally, there's not much to do. I mean, there's a there's a river nearby which I haven't been in yet. So looking forward to going in that tomorrow. Otherwise, it's a lot of just spring faced with water bottles and ice towels and cold showers. But I mean, it'll only help in the long run because it's going to be hot in France as well so the more we can get used to playing in 30 degree temperature I mean it'll be better for us. And I want us to really concentrate on the wave passing that we are just going across okay a lot of us are going getting it here winding up and going through you're going to get belt, belted you get it there and you're straight through okay keep the ball on the plane that's what we're after eh? back with Goose. I think it was pretty obvious that we changed the way we played during the last Six Nations and in November as well. Uh, we wanted to, to do something different, try to play in a different way. We tried to play a lot from our own half as well. Uh, we tried to, to take the ball wide and wide as well because, and we tried to, to create space. Um, so yeah, I think, I think this, this game suits us and I think we're really playing on our strengths. Stay there, keep the pressure. That's it, that's it, brother. Stay, stay, stay there. Stay there. That's it, come on. Stay there, stay there. Well done, well done. I think there's a lot of tough elements in a World Cup camp, um, but probably, you know, those hard field sessions where you sort of have to get up off the floor quickly, um, those conditioning games, um, the bounce, uh, and then getting into the contact zone. So. Yeah, really, really tough. Um, and, and like we say, you know, you have to dig deep and, and go into the trenches and into those dark, dark places. Um, but you know, the lights at the end of the tunnel, and you know, every kid's dream is to is to play in a World Cup. Double rock! World reaction, BJ. Rock! There will be tough moments, but uh, you know, you have to know each other very well to to deal with those tough moments and obviously to prepare well you have to be responsible for yourself and for your teammates so uh, I think the individual responsibility it's something that uh, in a World Cup preparation it's uh, hugely important. No, go the way, DJ save! No, no go! 10-6! Yeah, no, they're all happy at the moment because no one's been uh, left out and we haven't selected the team, so <laughs> it's easy at the moment. You've got to create an environment where they feel involved um, and you've got to have a personal touch with them. I mean, you know, you, you, you have to have, uh, you know, you, you have to show that you care about the guys. You know, and it's not only talking rugby, it's talking you know, their life there. You have to show an interest in them. During training, we always have some fans on the um, outside, outside of the pitch. And I think that's something that makes you, you know, believe in what you're doing. Because I think the guys that are outside that comes in Pergine, uh, just to watch you train and just to maybe get a signature or get a picture with you. Uh, it's something that mm, motivates you to play for them, you know. Yeah. 
I've never been to a workout before, so I uh, can't really tell you what I'm looking for after, like outside of the outside of the rugby pitch. So mainly uh, outside of it, it will be important to, you know, just change the mind and take a little bit off. I think the main thing is the fans, because the crowds are crazy. Having experienced it in the top 14 this season. And because we have France in our group and it's the last game of the pool, that's going to be sell out. You won't be able to hear a thing. So to be able to play in that game would be unbelievable and like an experience you probably won't get again. You know, we, we're playing in some pretty special places, you know, Lyon, Nice. So I think that's a, it's an important opportunity, you know, to switch off when you can. Um, enjoy spending time with, you know, with some of the boys and, and your teammates and family. You know, I'll have my family around. So, you know, that'll be That'll be extremely special and um, yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. Oh, I'm looking forward to my family being there. You know, we're going to have um, two daughters, one's in New Zealand, one's in Canada and son in Canada and you know, wife obviously um, in, in Italy. So, you know, they're all going to be together for the World Cup. Um, so I'm probably looking forward mostly to um, outside of rugby to catch up with them. Whether I'm going to be good company during that time is another question, um, but that's probably the thing I'd mostly look forward to. We play in the first time for the country, so it's important to feel this pressure, because it's really an honor to bring this medal.